Hello to the fourth and last part of the video series on how to read the chart of nuclides. In today's video we will discuss the following. What does M and G mean? What do these horizontal arrows mean? Beta delayed nucleons and conversion electrons. And if we understood all of that we can then do a practice on three different isotopes. Let's start with G and M. G stands for ground state and M stands for the metastable state. This refers not to the decaying nucleus but to the daughter nucleus. So holmium 147 can decay via beta plus to either dysprosium 147 M or dysprosium 147 G. In fact we can further deduce that it's more likely to decay into dysprosium 147 M since the M is listed before the G. Dysprosium 147 M can then either decay via isomeric transition to dysprosium 147G or directly through beta plus decay into terbium 147M. However, it doesn't decay into terbium 147G. This M and G distinction applies not only for the beta plus but also to isomeric transitions. For example with iridium 192 there is a 192M2, 192M1 and 192G. We can see that the iridium 192M2 can only decay into the iridium 192G based on the presence of this G. It doesn't go from M2 to M1 to G, instead it goes directly from M2 into G. After a radio active decay, the daughter nucleus is usually in an excited state. But two criteria must be met for the label M to be listed in this tile. The decay must lead into a metastable state with a probability of more than 5% as it is not the case for iodine 123 has to have a minimum half-life of about 10 to the power of minus 12 seconds. Only when both the criteria are met then the label M can be used. The next question is about the horizontal arrows. This indicates uncertainty when it comes to assigning decay data two different isomeric states. For example here rhodium 114. The next question is about delayed nucleons. If a beta decay leads to a daughter isomeric state that is energetically very high it may not transition to the ground state of the actual daughter nucleus. Instead another nucleon may be emitted. For example with neon 26. After a beta minus decay an excited sodium 26 nucleus is formed. This excited state of the daughter nucleus may emit a neutron to become sodium 25. These beta delayed neutrons play a significant role when it comes to fission and moderation of nuclear reactors. This phenomenon also occurs with other particle emissions such as beta delayed proton emission of aluminium 23. There are also other beta delayed particles emissions like the beta delayed spontaneous fission in einsteinium 256, beta delayed deuteron emissions in helium 6, beta delayed triton emission for helium 8 and when it comes to lithium 11 with its two neutron halo you can grant its own video to be honest. The final topic regarding the chart of nuclides is conversion electrons. After a decay when the nucleus is excited we typically expect gamma radiation to be emitted as a mean to release excess energy. However another way to release this energy is through conversion electrons. Since the 1s electrons have some probability of being at the nucleus since the nucleus is not a perfect Point, it's possible for a nucleus to more or less directly interact with these electrons transferring its energy to them and ejecting them. These electrons ejected directly by the excess energy of the nucleus are called conversion electrons and are marked with a E- sign. Now that we have received all the theoretical input let's try to apply this knowledge. If you want me to create some sort of practice video with easy, medium and hard examples please leave a comment preferably with a specific example. Keep in mind that these examples are from a chart of nucleides from 2006 so some values may differ from a current chart of nucleides. Let's start with uranium 238. Pause the video and see how much you can deduce without my help. Okay time's up. Uranium 238 is a primordial radionucleus with the 238. 38 isotope making up 99.2742% of all uranium atoms occurring on earth. There is an excited state uranium 238m which has a half-life of 298 nanoseconds and can decay to the ground state via isomeric transition emitting a gamma ray with the energy of 2514 
or 1879 kilo electron volts. But those aren't the only gamma energies, there are also other ones with a probability of less than 1%. The probability of isomeric transition ranges from 50 to 95%. The other decay mode of uranium 238m is spontaneous fission with a probability of occurrence ranging from 5 to 50%. For example, I know that this was corrected to be below 5% in the 2016 and 2018 version. Now onto uranium 238G. This has a half-life of 4.48 times 10 to the power of 9 years. With a probability of up to 95% it decays via alpha emission emitting a 4.198 mega electron volt alpha particle. Other alpha energies are possible but have a probability of less than 1%. Spontaneous fission occurs with a probability of under 5%. There can be a double beta minus decay. The most common gamma line is the 50 kilo electron volt line but even that has a probability of occurrence of less than 1%. Our newly learned conversion electrons can also be detected. The cross section for an N gamma reaction with thermal neutrons is 2.7 barn which is quite high as it is higher than 1. The cross section for a neutron induced fission is with 3 times 10 to the power of minus 6 barns quite small. The next is ruthenium 105 which decays with a half-life of 4.44 hours and a 100% via beta minus decay. The maximum energy of the beta particles is 1.2 mega electron volts or with a lower probability 1.8 mega electron volts. Up on decay, gammas are emitted sorted by decreasing probability with the energies of 724, 469, 676 and 316 kilo electron volts. Other energies are also possible but have a probability of less than 1%. Ruthenium-105 primarily decays into rhodium-105g but with a probability of over 5% it decays into rhodium-105m. The cross section for an N-gamma reaction with thermal neutrons is 0.29 barns which is quite small. The last and most challenging example is americium-242. It's not naturally occurring. There is a nuclear isomer where spontaneous fission has been observed. Americium-242m has a half-life of 141 years and decays 95% via isomeric transition emitting a 49 kilo electron volt gamma ray with a probability of less than 1%. Here too conversion electrons can be observed which makes sense otherwise how would this excess energy be released. It decays less than 5% via alpha decay with the most common energy being a 5.206 mega electron volt alpha particle. Other possibilities exist but with a probability of less than 1%. Spontaneous fission is observed to less than 5% and less than the alpha decay. The cross section for an N-gamma reaction is 1700 barns and the neutron induced fission cross section is 5900 barns which is absolutely insane. Americium 242G has a half-life of just 16 hours. That is quite unusual but it happens that the metastable state is more long-lived than the ground state. It can decay between 5 and 95% via beta decay. The electrons in the beta decay can have a maximum energy of 0.7 mega electron volts. Electron capture is also a possibility and the emission of gamma photons with a energy of 42 kilo electron volts is possible but to less than 1%. Also conversion electrons can be observed and americium 242 g decays into the ground state of its daughter nucleus. The cross section for the N gamma reaction with thermal neutrons is 330 barns and the neutron induced fission cross section is 2100 barns. Hello to this one person still watching. You have acquired knowledge that not even a nuclear chemist would realistically ever need to use. Here, take a cookie. You've earned it. With that being said, goodbye. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons.